All right, g'day everyone. So today we are going to be converting Google Maps's uh, locational data download into something a little bit more useful than what they give you. So when you go and create this whole Google takeout thing and you download your location history, you get a JSON file given to you. And it's there are apparently multiple types of JSON files. There's like GeoJSON and some other types of JSONs, but the particular one that Google gives you is not able to be chucked straight into um, thing, uh, programs such as QGIS or ArcGIS or even Google Earth. So we're gonna have to do a bit of converting. So there's a bloke here, um, Scary Gami from Austria, looks like a bit of a virgin, but what he makes up for with his virginity is the fact that he has some nice well-functioning code so we're going to download his uh, location history json converter thing as you can see up here in the address bar we're going to download his code and we're going to get to work on that so one of the important things you need to do is i guess set up a fairly simple um, uh, directory in which we're putting both the um, in which we have both the converter Python file as well as the JSON file. So I'm going to call this lock, L-O-C, short for location, nice and short and easy. And you'll see why we want to make it nice and short in just a second. So now I'm going to take my location history JSON file and we're going to put it back into where uh, the lock file is. So the idea is we have the location history JSON converter Python file, which old mate has made sitting here and in the folder you've also got the JSON file. And just to save potentially any issues arising, I'm gonna take away the space and location history because we'll be doing some CMD coding stuff. So let's have a go with that. So the particular code that we need to use is given right here. So in CMD, we're gonna be running four um, arguments into command prompt, but in order to, but before we do that, we first need to get to the right directory. And so this is where we, why we wanted to shorten the directory. So we're gonna go, I think it's forward slash CD. Nope, so oh, CD forward slash, not forward slash CD. Sorry, I'm not a command prompt expert. So CD is change directory. And now what we're gonna do is go change directory forward slash, and then I'm going to get the all right so what we're going to do sorry i made a mistake with this when we're copying the directory path we're going to not include the c drive because the c drive is already sitting there in command prompt so it's going to be change directory uses mp3 yada 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 um so basically by changing directory to this loc folder we're then ready to run the command within that folder if that makes sense um, apparently right clicking pastes, I did not know that. Anyway, so we're gonna take the um, code that we got from old mate's uh, Python page here. I'm gonna put the code into CMD and now we're going to edit these parameters. So Python is fine, we're gonna leave that. Location history JSON converter.py. That is the name of that Python file that old mate has put here in his folder, which is fine. Now for the input, this is where we have to make it match the file that we want to convert. So the input, we're going to have that as location history, history um, dot JSON. Cool. And the output, uh, make it whatever you want, but we want to make it a KML file. So I'm going to put location convert dot KML. Now, so this is going to run. The Python script is going to convert the JSON file to a KML file. Let's see what happens. Go. Fuck. What? Oh, okay. We figured it out, <laughs> folks. So um, I had to download and install Python. And I'm not sure if I needed to restart my computer, but I did. And then his code must be wrong because he wrote in his code Python location history. Um, but instead you actually just write PY 
and then location history etc etc so that worked took a bit of figuring out so if you have the latest version of python installed and you write in pi location history converter which is the file sitting in the directory the loc file which we saw just a moment ago that's it sitting right there and then we have the input which is our location history json which is sitting right there and then the output is location converter kml and as you can see it's currently writing a whole lot of locations so let's see what happens once it's finished with that because it might take a bit of time Alrighty, folks we are back i just went and put some pasta on the stove and while i've been gone it's gone ahead and written one million locations to a kml file so let's have a look at that we had a json file which was <coughs> 587 meg and it's gone and created a kml file which is um, must be a bit more efficiently in how it compresses because it's 327 meg now the issue with kml files large kml files is they are really not very efficient to work with so we are going to go ahead and open up QGIS. The reason being is we want to convert these KMLs into geo packages. Now you can have a crack at doing this in R, converting to shape files if you want. I have noticed there have been some glitches and errors in doing conversions in um, ArcMap, so um, maybe ArcGIS Pro has fixed that, but either way I've got QGIS here, so we're going to go ahead and chuck our KML here into QGIS. Um, you, when you go, if you've got a whole lot of location data like I do, when you go ahead and chuck it into QGIS, you'll probably get not responding because it's trying to process this ridiculous amount of data, but it will eventually, hopefully, pop up and we can go ahead and convert it into our Geo package, which is going to be a whole lot smoother, much easier to work with, and we can actually look at stuff. All right, if the resolution of this video really wasn't that good during the first half of this video, I really apologize. I'm definitely figuring things out as we go. Anyway, so we uh, finally managed to get the KML file into <coughs> QGIS. So now we're going to go ahead and save it out as a geo package file. Um, that's going to make things a whole lot easier to work with. So let's jump back into where we were before. We're going to save it in as location convert. And to make it really obvious that it's geo package, we're going to call it that. Geo package, geo package. The GS84, why not? Let's just leave the coordinate system as it is. Let's save it out, and that may take a little bit of time to work. Alrighty, folks, we have got the geo package. It's all done and exported. It took a little bit of time. Let's go and chuck the Google satellite image to see whereabouts we've gotten to. So it's a little bit dodgy until you zoom in a little bit further. But let's just zoom in on a little bit of Tassie and see whereabouts I may have been at some point in my life. Yes, it still takes a bit to load. Let's turn off the pre non geo package one. There we go, now it loads a whole lot better. So as soon as you turn the JSON one off, <coughs> it makes it a little bit nicer to run. So let's have a look at this, shall we? All right, so all the points have loaded in, looks really nice, but what I have done is gone and created a numerical version of the accuracy column that comes through in the data. Uh, this is text for some reason, so I went and made a numerical one. The reason I did that is because I wanted to show you guys a little something with the data, and it's gone frozen on me, what the fuck? There we go, okay. Um, <clears throat> the reason I wanted to show it to you guys, what I was wanting to show you to you guys is the fact that my location history, according to Google Maps, has shown me being up around Bridport at some point in the past. Now, I can tell you that I've never been to Bridport or nearby in my life. I have been down here, and you can tell that from the green dot, but I've never been up here near Bridport, and so I was a bit confused as to why on earth it showed me as going to Bridport, like maybe I'd been there and forgotten. I was so drunk that I forgot, but no, the truth is that I haven't been to Bridport. If you delve into the location a little bit deeper, um, you can see that the accuracy value is 5,000. I'm assuming that means 5,000 meters um, <clears throat> of precision. Now, <clears throat> the thing with that is that 
um, obviously it's quite inaccurate, so maybe you'd want to filter this out, but it's actually worse than five, th or five kilometers because um, it was on the same day, so this is 16th of the 8th, it was on the exact same day as this that I was driving from Ben Lomond down here towards Launceston. And so what must have happened at some point on this car ride down here, my location went so inaccurate um, the inaccuracy on that particular day would have been uh, 50 kilometers. So even though it tells you that the accuracy is five kilometers, um, in actual fact, um, <clears throat> it was 50 kilometers out on this particular day. So, you know, the accuracy can definitely tell you how sure um, it is about things, but just because it says it's uh, a particular value, it could be actually quite a lot worse. Or it could definitely be better. I actually don't know how it works. Um, these values here, as you can see, the accuracy is like four meters, nine meters as you're driving low, along quite a bit more expected. Um, apart from the data and the accuracy, there's not a huge amount that you get given. Oh, apparently you get altitude. That shows me oh, altitude is null. <laughs> Sometimes you get altitude. Um, but I guess, yeah, the point from this is that you don't get a huge amount of data out of this apart from apparently sometimes your altitude, your accuracy, the date, There's that's pretty much all you really get out of this data. But it is still pretty cool to be like, okay, this is where I was in 2020. This is where I was. These places I've been to. Um, it's interesting to go through. So that's it. That's how you convert the Google Takeout JSON file into um, a KML using that command prompt script we were using before and then converting that into a GA package and then coloring it based on accuracy so you can get a real sense of the data that you have in front of you and then from there you can do whatever the hell you want. So that's pretty much it guys. Um, leave a comment if you got confused at any point. Leave a comment and tell me whatever the hell you want. Tell me what you had for tea tonight. I had some pasta and it was really nice actually. So um, leave a comment and have a good one.